This is the Ryder and Lisa Replay. Brought to you by Action Furnace. Fixed right or it's free. Just the worst criminal story. There was an 11-year-old running a lemonade stand. Oh, no. What happened? Selling drinks and snacks on a street corner in part to raise money for the people in Ukraine. Sounds like he may have... Ukrainian heritage. Jeremy Rizhonkov is his name. What a little sweetheart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, then somebody rolled in, and uh, I'll let Jeremy explain what happened from there. They, like, got so much stuff and gave me a hun- fake $100 bill for a lot of stuff, like, worth $20, and gave them $80 in change. I was like, the texture doesn't feel good, and it kind of feels like it's something's wrong with this uh, money. Nope, not not real. So he lost $80? Mm-hmm. And $20 of product. Uh, see, I thought they were just going to give him the fake 100 and then take a bunch of product, mm-hmm. and that was it. But no. No, they he got change. change back of my heart. Yeah. So I, I would assume that uh, people are going to step up, you know. The internet seems to uh, correct these things. When you originally aired just the clip of the boy, Mm -hmm. him talking about the texture of the $100 bill, I was like, oh no, is he blind? Yeah, this isn't Dumb and Dumber. Pretty bird. Yeah, can you say pretty bird? Pretty bird. Yes, pretty bird. I don't know if another scene has shocked me the way that that scene shocked me the first time i watched it with the bird's head taped on its oh body oh my gosh a poor blind boy just petting it yeah, yeah. i took care of it <laughs> <laughs> yeah no kidding that sounds heavy uh we got a text to 780-784-7107 from amanda saying uh can we hear ariana's voice as that character oh you'll hate it check it out my name is god we gonna have a dialogue Hello, future me. It's me, past you. I'm back! Yes, yes, just shut up and take my money. If I was around somebody that talked like that for, like I said, numerous seasons, I would also write a book being happy that people died. (laughs) Listen to this. She also describes an incident of being photographed in a bikini at a wardrobe fitting, being encouraged to drink alcohol by a person identified in the memoir as, quote unquote, the creator. She stated that Nickelodeon then later offered her $300,000 to agree not to discuss her experience at the network, which she turned down the money and wrote about wow. it in the book. I'd be very interested to see if other Nickelodeon like child stars open up about their right. experience. Like, who is yeah. this, quote unquote, the creator? Okay, hold on. I did read that she was 18 when she was given an alcoholic drink. Oh, okay. But in the States, you have to be 21. You have to be 21. But when I read it, I was like, oh, that's still like you're old enough to go to war in the States. Like that didn't seem like that. Yeah, but it's also weird if the creator is like a man in his 50s. Yeah, very valid point. So weird. Very valid point. So again, this book is called I'm Glad My Mom Died, and it's sold out most places, but I'll get on that waiting list to read about it. Hell yeah. If you came across a traffic incident where an entire load out of the back of a semi was all over a road, what would you hope to find? Oh, that's a really hard question. Like beef jerky would be pretty good. See, I thought you were asking, like, would you get out and help or would you get out and just Mm -mm. like grab a bunch of stuff? Because at that point, it's contaminated, right? They can't sell it. They can't resell it. No, it's got dents in it. Yeah, it's trash anyway. There's even an expression. It fell out of the back of the truck means when somebody gives you something that like their company owns oh and they're like here you have this promotional product just say it fell out of the back of the truck that happened to me once and i didn't know that was an expression so somebody's like hey where'd you get that i was like oh it fell out of the back of the truck and they're like "Uh uh-huh wink wink like what you're like it was it's a, a miracle it's still in great shape yeah. uh, it's a oh, beer mini fridge honestly that that is a true story uh but yeah there's a story circulating right now which would have been a pretty good find as a semi with a truck full of bud light ended up in an accident and there was just buds all over the road it's a lot of water no bud light i said i know oh uh, this is the news report on it. <laughs> Stay with me on this. The big time problem spot in a traffic tie up for you, unfortunately. Let's go ahead and show you from a live look from our chopper. What you're looking at here is an overturned semi. And all of those blue boxes that you're looking at here, 
those are cartons of beer out there. So we are talking about a ton of beer that is over here. The ramp is completely blocked. So as she continued, though, I noticed a little something. Here, listen to this. this She's is... live on location at the y- truck? Yeah, and this is the next time she talked. <laughs> we are talking about a ton of beer that is over here. The ramp is completely blocked, but you can see cases of beer that are now spread all across the region. This Sounds yeah. like she was having a pretty good time Sounds there. Sounds like she's been shotgunning. <laughs> if you're wondering why Tommy Lee is trending today, it's probably best to not look while on a work computer. If you look over and there's a random coworker that just opened Instagram and gasped mm-hmm. into their phone, it's probably because they follow Tommy Lee. Yeah, I wasn't sure what I was looking at at the start, if it was Tommy Lee or if I was looking at pictures of Mundare. Yeah. So Tommy Lee changed his bio to new album out now and then posted his posted his entire unit. It looks like he's sitting on the corner of a hot tub or something. And if that's the future of music marketing, Mm -hmm. you've got to feel bad for the guys with small ones. (laughs) (laughs) I just didn't see this on 2022's bingo card. I really didn't. Is it that surprising and shocking? No. Uh, More so just the fact that it's still up hours later. Yeah. How it hasn't been flagged. Whereas like people will post themselves breastfeeding and it gets flagged and taken down. Mind boggling to me. A lot of people have seen his unit before, right? It's yeah, been out in the past yeah, yeah, on stage. Fair. Like I, he's and like, very well known to have... Uh, there's been tapes of him that have been exposed. Right. The uh, most famous sex tape of all time. The most famous one, yeah. Uh, so, yes, it, it is uh, in the news again. I, I don't recommend searching for it on your work computer. Because no. how awful would that be to have to explain to your parents why you got fired? Yeah, so... <laughs> I was uh, I was, it, I was looking so at a picture funny. of a naked man. <laughs> it's prep. It's show prep. It's part of our job. Um, it's funny because I have a girlfriend's group chat and somebody sent it saying like, good morning, ladies. And it was a screenshot. And we were all like, you follow Tommy Lee. She's like, no, I actually got this screenshot from another group chat of another group of friends. <laughs> so one of them must follow him. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> that's, uh, that's where it's going around. Yeah. Today we're talking about expensive purchases you, maybe your partner made, your parents made that just never was used. Maybe used once, but just not <sighs> worth the money. Michelle texted into 780-784-7107 saying, during COVID, we bought a knockoff Peloton. It's called an Echelon. And it's just collecting so much dust. A $1,500 purchase plus $35 a month subscription that just sits there looking at us. You got to get on that. Just get on it. Get, go for a ride today. Just once. And then it'll be worth the 1500 That's a $1,500 workout. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll see results immediately. This text says a $300 Nespresso machine the wife just had to have dot, 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 dot. Does that mean it's not being used? I feel like if there was a Nespresso in the house, mm-hmm. everyone uses it. Every once in a while. That fourth dot was really intense eh? there was actually only three dots i don't oh, know why i added you one threw in one just for the dramatic effect i, I like it I, I like it i'm just lying we're going to a golf tournament today mm-hmm. the frontline celebrity classic and i've got a brand new pair of golf shoes on and i'm so excited because i think the dumbest purchase i've made that i rarely use mm-hmm. the most i've ever spent on any footwear was a 250 dollars pair of golf shoes that are hideous and i never wear you say they look like bus driver shoes. Yes, which there's nothing wrong with bus driver shoes. They're just not ideal for a golf course. Yeah, they're golf shoes, but mm. so they are ideal for a golf course. But I've been made fun of so much for these shoes that they just sit there and look at me every time I'm about to go golf, and I'm like, ah, no, not today, yeah, guys. They look like cartoon shoes, like something Homer Simpson wears. In- really wide, flat, yeah. black leather Shoot. Anyway, but that... congrats on your new shoes. Thank you. They look good. They feel good. Purchases that you don't use enough. Um, we have a robot vacuum that just sits in the closet. Why does it sit in the closet? You got a real dirty closet? <laughs> <laughs> no, we have um, a St. Bernard and a Mastador, so it could never keep up with their hair. So what's the point? There's no point, because right now it's a vacuum 10 times a day. <laughs> 
a math door? Yeah, she's like Mastiff Lab. Whoa. Can you, uh, once you're parked safely, send pictures of your dogs, please? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Why am I getting vibes of bullfight? Oh, matador. That's the word what I was thinking. What do you think? What's that mean? A matador? I think it's a like a Spanish bullfighter. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, I had my husband uh, pick me up on elliptical off a of marketplace. I bugged him. I promised I would use it. Uh, he picked it up for me, and it's been sitting in a corner in our basement for about four months now, just collecting dust. So. Now, did you try to use it and it just like wasn't as smooth as you thought or you never even gave it a go? No, I haven't even looked at it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the call. We appreciate it. Maybe it's time to look at it, right? Mm-hmm. I'm just realizing now I never buy expensive things. I am cheap. Frugal. That's good. Let's go with Especially that. Especially when we're talking about not using them after you spend right? too much on them. Yeah, it's the online shopping, like, late at night after a couple beers when I'm like, I could use this. Like, I even remember be- going to my mom's house, my parents' house, and seeing that she had those candles that look like real flames, and you put them on a timer, and they'll just turn on, and they look like a legit candle is, mm-hmm. is burning in your living room. And she had a group of them. Like, there were three in a group together, and then over there, there was another one. I was like, I want those. So I looked them up. They're so expensive. So I won't even do that. I won't even buy something that I love. Mm-hmm. That you know you're going to use. That I know would like bring me joy yeah, yeah. at night watching TV and seeing them turn on and flickering and not having to worry about, did I blow out the candles because they're fake? <laughs> but I won't buy them because they're like $40 each. I was like, who pays for this? <laughs> 780-784-7107. Something you spend a lot of money on and never or rarely use. Wedding dress. One time you still sitting in my closet, never got it dry cleaned. It's just sitting there. And now, how, how many years ago did you get married? Ten today. It's what? Our anniversary today. Hey. It's their wedding anniversary. Though well, all you got to pull it out, put it on. Let's wait get a minute. Another wait, 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 wait. <laughs> what? Are you guys still together? Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Woo. <laughs> if that was the case, she'd wear it today and then burn it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wear it in a mud puddle. Let my daughter wear it today. That <gasps> might work better. Okay, that's, that's cute. really cute. I love that. <laughs> Play 107. So I wanted to talk about this story of the CEO of LinkedIn. I didn't even know who this person was. And now that I know more about this person, I want to know less. Okay, what happened? The CEO of LinkedIn posted a selfie of him crying saying just because i'm a ceo of a major corporation major company Mm -hmm. i'm still a human being and his reason for crying is because he just laid off a bunch of people now that would be tough Now it would be very tough yeah especially if you're an emotional person right like i i would say if i was a boss quite possibly the hardest part of the job would be firing people no absolutely that's their livelihood but a lot of the comments are like whoa tone deaf like at least you still have a job you're still the ceo of a company yeah and now now to a lot of people they're like whoa lisa that's harsh maybe you're listening now and you're like okay yeah it's good that he has emotions about this but i want everyone listening to think of their own boss right now okay now picture, let's say your boss fires you. Mm-hmm. You go on Instagram a couple hours later and your boss has a picture of themselves crying. About firing about you. Fire- Wouldn't you be pissed? Yeah, that's true. You'd be like, excuse you? You're crying? Yeah, as you're trying to like sort your life out. Everything is just crumbling around you and they're having a pity party? You, I don't think so. You made the mistake of signing up to a bunch of stuff like utilities and using your work email. And now you oh, got to change that. That is so true. Everybody's made that mistake. That would suck. Luckily for these people that got fired, though, they worked at LinkedIn. So they should know how to get another job. Tough day today for uh, a lot of Edmontonians, Oilers fans, and more specifically, the family of a young man who meant a lot to to our city. Mm -hmm. As we said goodbye to Ben yesterday at the age of six years old. If uh, maybe you're new to the city or don't follow hockey, you may not be aware who we're talking about. But Ben Steltler was uh, a tough kid who ended up having to fight something that no kid should go through. Uh, he had a rare form of cancer and was going through some pretty intense treatments for that. His dad tweeted, the world lost the most special boy and an absolute hero last night. Ben, you were my best son. 
You were the best son we could ever hope for, and you were my best bud ever. Your sisters were so lucky to have you as such a sweet brother. You fought so long and hard and beat so many odds. You truly changed the world and did so much good in your short time here. Mom and I are so proud of you. You had a bigger heart than anyone we've ever met. Our hearts are left with a Ben-sized hole in them, and life will never be the same without you. We are absolutely crushed. We love you, our sweet Benny boy. Yeah, and uh, so he ended up being a big part of the Oilers playoff run because he was a huge Oilers fan and the team really did embrace him, brought him in. He was the Scotiabank skater and got to come and stand out at the blue line. Mm -hmm. And you could tell him and Connor had a a good bond. And all of a sudden, when the world is at a point where everyone was disagreeing about everything. That's what it felt like for sure. And then all of a sudden, this beautiful boy emerged who was going through something far worse than the rest of us were dealing with. Yep. And we had something to rally around and something to agree on, and that was that we were all just rooting for Ben. Him and his family are fans of the station, fans of the show, and so we invited them in to come and hang out. And as much as it was cool for them, it felt so much cooler to us. You were even, like, really nervous because he had like, this celebrity status. I was like, he's so famous. And I just wish there were, What is a word that is better than strength? Because I've never in my life met someone like Ben. Yeah. Yeah, he had uh, like he was a sense so... of calm through something oh that gosh. not many people would be calm. Not a lot of adults would be. It was so calm, admirable. Let alone a kid. Yeah. Noble is I, a way I, I saw yeah, it worded yesterday. I actually can't even think of a word to describe it. This was him in the studio, and man, his giggle was just the best. This is when we introduced him. It is the Edmonton Oilers good luck charm. Ben, welcome to the studio, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> My favorite moment, I think, uh, outside of our moments with him was when he was with Zach Hyman on uh, on the press table after a big win for the team. Mm-hmm. And did you hear Hyman had a baby boy yesterday? Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's a coincidence, but named him Bennett. Yeah, which pretty I think powerful. Is so sweet. Yeah. And the fans outside of Rogers were cheering very loudly and then they realized during that interview that they were cheering for ben all of the fans outside and this is uh hyman letting him know about it sending your name out there did you see the right you see all the fans on the other side all the fans look at that they're all cheering for you <laughs> a little wave yeah while hyman's actually answering like legit questions that interviewers are asking he's just waving to all the fans outside, oh, it's so amazing. <laughs> he was a pretty uh, funny little dude as well. I saw a story online that I wanted to read from yesterday from a family friend of theirs, Ryan, who said, I was at their house watching a game with Mike, Ben's dad, and Ben in April. Mike finished their basement but still hadn't put railings up the stairs. Ben was having a hard time going up the stairs and said, what kind of doofus doesn't add railings? And then he laughed and (laughs) finished walking up the stairs. He was so witty. When he was here in the studio, Ryder leaned over and he's like, can you put in a good word to Connor McDavid? I've always wanted to hang out with him. And Ben quickly responds with, yeah, I can try, but he'll probably respond with, sorry, I'm too busy hanging out with my buddy Ben. And he like puts like the thumb towards himself as if he's like being hilarious as he's walking away. I My jaw dropped. I was like, what a clever kid. <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah, I got to see him in LA when I was there for the playoffs. So yeah. Him and his family. His grandpa is actually a fan of our station now. He listens all the way from Texas with his wife. So I got to meet them. And there's one video that uh, his grandpa's wife, his grandma, like sent me on Twitter. And it was me leaning over being like, how jealous is Ryder that you and I are in L.A. watching hockey together? And he's like, Haha, yeah, this is such a cute <laughs> video. <laughs> uh, we're going to miss him a lot. He was uh, a very special little dude. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's one thing he loved more than the Oilers. And it might have been the song La Bamba. <laughs> so this is when we asked him what he wanted to hear. Ben, what did you want me to do again? Play the mama, baby. The Ryder and Lisa Replay. Brought to you by Action Furnace. Fixed right or it's free. Play 107.